Welcome back to week 10 of the Pokemon Battle League. This is Ian of the Mahogany Town Muse, and this week I am battling Dan of the... somethings? Uh, Elix Forest Trevenants, I think. Uh, yeah, so let's just get it started. Yeah, so here we go. Um, I lead off with my Smeargold this week. Uh, I knew he only had about two counters to this uh, initial Spore, that being Celebi and Overcoat um, Mandibuzz. But uh, thankfully he sends out the uh, Hoopa U on his first turn, and I actually do outspeed because this little dog is uh, pretty fast, and I get to put it to sleep on turn one, so that's pretty, pretty baller for me. Uh, I use this opportunity to set up a sticky web, uh, entry hazard that's going to lower uh, all of his team's speed when they come in, <clears throat> and unfortunately he does wake up on this turn and gets up a hyperspace fury, uh, which is a really cool looking move, and it does knock me down to my focus sash uh, and lower his defense. I know I'm still faster at this point, so I do just go for another spore. Uh, Either he's going to go to sleep, or he's going to put somebody else to sleep. And uh, he actually does send in the Galisopod here, and that guy is going to go right to sleep after um, having his speed lowered by one stage from the Sticky Web. So um, at this point, I'm going to switch out. I know that I can probably bring in Heatran for free, assuming that he's going to be asleep at least for this turn. And um, I put my faith in the, uh, the heart of the cards here that I will be able to set up this uh, substitute and he won't wake up and just like first impression me <clears throat> or not first impression, uh, liquidation me down to zero but uh, thankfully he does remain asleep and I can set up this substitute for free I think it's the second one in the entirety of the season and uh, I do go for a Magma Storm which actually misses which is to be expected because it's a 75% accuracy move and uh, he actually stays asleep as well, so we might as well just assume that turn never happened. Uh, next turn I do go for the Magma Storm again. I am going to outspeed pretty much anything at this point with the Sticky Web. And uh, it does knock him down to about 60% and uh, trap him uh, kind of like a uh, fire spin move or something like that. And he does go for the Liquidation, which is very obviously going to take down my Substitute. But uh, that's fine, that's exactly what the substitute's for. And after leftovers, I'm at about 100%, and the uh, residual damage from Magma Storm is going to bring his by Felicia down to less than half, so he is going to emergency exit out and uh, by Felicia. Uh, so at that point, he does bring in the uh, Kabutops here. It is going to get its speed lowered, and I'm going to stop saying that because it's going to happen to literally everyone in the entire battle. Uh, so I bring back out my Cofagrigus for the first time, and uh, he does go for a Sword Stance, probably expecting the switch, because I'd be pretty afraid of a waterfall. Um, he does miss the initial Stone Edge, which is pretty good for me. Uh, lets me get off a Will-O-Wisp for free, uh, knock the, his attack back down to plus zero, essentially, and uh, get off some pretty easy chip damage. Uh, so the next one does connect, and after the burn, it's going to do a little less than half. And uh, I can go for a knockoff, thinking maybe he might switch, or maybe I can just knock off his item. Uh, it does activate his weak armor, which I kind of forgot existed, which boosts his speed, but at the cost of some of his defense, which is kind of scary, uh, especially when he can set up some stored sword stances. But I am pretty tanky, so the speed doesn't actually matter at this point. Um, he goes for a waterfall, and even with the boost, uh, despite the burn, it does, you know, like 20% of my HP. And uh, I can just go for a hex, which is actually going to bring him down to about, I don't know, probably 5 HP, at which point the burn is going to take him out. So, Edward Scissored Hands, or Edward, you know, Scythe Hands, I guess? Yeah, he's kind of got some scythes going on. It's going to fall right down to that hex. Uh, so he brings in the Celebi. Uh, he probably is going to go for something like a Shadow Ball, because uh, I'm not the best 
uh, special defensive wall. So I am just going to bring my Heatran in. He's pretty naturally special defensive and it's actually not going to be very effective um, against me. Uh, so I do recover some leftovers HP and uh, knowing that he can't take any of my fire attacks he is just going to bring in the Golisopod again and assuming he was going to switch out and actually do this exact switch I do just go for a stealth rock try to set it up uh, get some damage off on any future switches since I seem to be uh, forcing a lot of those uh, I'm going to recover a little bit more at the end of the turn and uh, I'm gonna be faster. I'm surprised he didn't have first impression here or even maybe an aqua jet uh, but I do get off the magma storm thankfully and it does take out the glycopod. I'm kind of confused about the moves set there but uh, it's possible he just didn't have any of those moves and he was trying to run something uh, not as fast but uh, more powerful. So uh, he brings in the Hoopy U after the knockout and it's going to take some Stealth Rocks damage, and knowing I can't take a Drain Punch or anything like that, I am just going to switch out to my Smeargle just to kind of scout out what move he is going for, and just confirm that he is going to Drain Punch me, which he does, and he's going to suck all of my 1 HP into himself, give him that 1 HP, and uh, get the first KO on my team. Uh, that allows me to bring out my on Lee here, talk shit, get on Lee and <clears throat> it is going to force him out assuming that I can't outspeed with the sticky web on the field. Um, he does send in his Tornadus T here and very surprisingly uh, even without the stealth rocks it would have been a clean two hit KO with a high jump kick. Uh, so he does come in on one of the high jump kicks and with a second one his Tornadus is going to be gone. Didn't even get a chance to make a move. It's actually pretty surprising to me that the high jump kick uh, was able to do that much. But um, this does allow him to bring in his scissor uh, for free. And I know that this guy's probably going to set up, probably going to mega. Uh, and Hitmonlee's defenses are not the best. So I am going to bring in my Nidoking here. I was pretty sure that I could take even a plus two mega scissors bullet punch. Um, I didn't want to calc for this game, so I kind of just winged it. And uh, he does go for the sword stance on the turn that I switch, and he does get it for free, and I get the switch in for free. But um, in the end, the bullet punch does do enough damage to one hit KO me. Uh, afterwards, I did look it up, and it was about a 90% chance that it would have, um, assuming he had the max attack. So there was a chance for me to survive, but not a very good one. And if I'd been calcing, I would have known that. But uh, I do switch into my Cofagrigus here. He's going to take a bullet punch again, and his mummy's actually going to switch over the uh, Scizor's Technician, which is going to lower his bullet punch's attack drastically. And in combination with the burn I just get off now, his bullet punch is not going to do nearly as much as it did uh, just one turn ago. Uh, obviously, this would have been the correct play to have done in the first place, but I felt that I was in a good enough position that I could bring out the Nido King and just try to uh, flamethrower it to death on the uh, first turn rather than actually try to stall it out and status it down. But in the end, it doesn't actually matter that much, as I do go for a Toxic Spikes, uh, thinking that I could survive uh, maybe one more Bullet Punch. I'm actually very surprised that I do. And uh, it does let me get off the, who's calling our old timey phone? What the fuck? People, don't they know I'm recording Pokemon? But um, he does get off one more bullet punch and my toxic spikes go down and uh, Kofagrigus has done his job very beautifully today. This does let me bring out my Heatran again. I know I'm gonna outspeed so I can set up a substitute even if he's gonna go for a superpower, which he does. And that's gonna knock my substitute down immediately. Oh my god, I have to sneeze. Oh my god. Uh, can't sneeze. Uh, okay, I guess it's just gone and I'm gonna live in hell for the next 20 minutes. Uh, so he does go for superpower and it's gonna knock off my substitute pretty instantly. Uh, I did want that to happen just to get the attack and uh, defense drop on his side. 
just in the event that I would have to try and take one of his attacks. But uh, actually, I do outspeed again, obviously, and uh, the Magnus Storm does connect, meaning I didn't actually have to waste that 25% of my HP. But um, that's fine with me. I'll gladly take it. And he is going to bring out the Celebi here once again. So uh, knowing that I can probably uh, take about three or four even uh, uh, Shadow Balls, I am going to set up a substitute here, and uh, the substitute's actually not going to be broken after the first Shadow Ball, which is pretty cool for me. Um, means that I can just get another free hit on myself and another Leftovers recovery, pretty much giving me almost a turn and a half of free damage. Which is good because my next Magma Storm does miss, and uh, I am forced to take that second Shadow Ball hit, which is going to get rid of my substitute. Uh, so at this point, I'm pretty much just waiting to see which Magma Storm is going to hit. Uh, I know this Celebi can't take even one of them, so even if by some crazy... Well, okay, in my case, it's probably not a crazy chance. But in some way, if my Magma Storms continue to miss, and I do go down to the Shadow Balls, the regular poison on the Celebi is going to take it out anyway assuming he doesn't get a natural cure by switching out. So uh, I do get hit, I think, one more time, and I bring out one more substitute, and he actually goes for Shadow Ball again, and surprisingly, it does knock out my substitute in one turn, meaning the last Shadow Balls were either doing, like, minimum damage, or this Shadow Ball is going to do about 24 to 26 percent of my HP, which means it's just in the perfect range to maybe need two hits, maybe just need one for a substitute. But uh, on the next turn, I do connect with a Magma Storm, thankfully, because I could not take another uh, Shadow Ball. And it does take out the Celebi with a crit, which totally didn't matter, but it is going to give me a little, little plus one in my stats over there. Should actually be like a negative stat for crits. Oh well. Uh, so he brings in his last Pokemon, the uh, Hoopa U, and it is going to get poisoned, and it's going to get the speed reduction, and it's going to be hurt by the Stealth Rocks. So uh, outspeeding once again, I am going to trap it in a Magma Storm, and that's going to bring it down to about 25% HP after everything. Uh, <laughs> the funny part is about this next play. Uh, after he kills my Heatran with a hyperspace hole, or whatever the hell it's called. Looks like Haku from uh, Naruto just throwing needles in my neck. Uh, I brought a Choice Scarf on my Hitmonlee for the first time this game, and uh, I meant to switch out Fake Out for Bullet Punch, but I actually forgot. And funny enough, I do just go for the Fake Out here, and it is the final play of the game going to take out Hoopa, and it wouldn't have mattered if I had switched out the move at all. So that's actually a pretty funny way to end it. Uh, it was a good battle. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't even bring out Tyranitar. I really wish I could have, but uh, it was a fun game, and I'm glad to see that Dan is making the best of the crazy uh, RNG team he was stuck with uh, for the last half of the season here. So uh, hopefully I'll get to battle you again, and we will see you the next time I commentate, which is in some amount of weeks. Nick will yell at me when I forget to do it. All right, see you then.